Right then, Dan's members and followers, we're going to have a quick go at just the basic ball flight law. Obviously, there's many factors that can, can affect it, but we're going to just keep to the, the premise that we're going to have a relatively centred ball, uh, centre club face strike. So there's no going to be no variables there. Obviously, anything that's more off centre, near the edges, can skew it. So the information you can get back from that cannot sort of be relevant to, to trying to, to self-analyse what shots you're going to hit. We're going to go, we're going to have centeredness of strike. We're going to sort of take that as a relative given. Um, so basically the meaning of that be wherever your club face is looking, 85% of that initial direction is purely to do with where the club face is looking. Nothing to do with your swing path. 85% of where that starting direction is all to do with where this club face is looking. The path that club is traveling in relation to that is then going to dictate the shot of it. So if the path your club is traveling on is the same to where your club face is looking, you're going to hit a relatively straight shot, whether that be a push, a straight shot to the target or a pull to the left. Any deviation, so if my swing path is swinging to the right of where my club face is looking, then I'm going to impart a spin that's going to curve that ball to the left. And if my swing path is swinging to the left of where my club face is looking at impact, then that's going to impart a spin to the right. Um, sometimes a saying I've heard is club face sends it and swing path bends it. So obviously that maybe that's something you can have in your mind when you're thinking about where the ball goes. I've tried to set something up here. Um, it might work, it might not, but we'll have a bit of fun. And, and if it doesn't really work, you can take the mickey at me. Let's have a quick look. Right then, let's give this a go. So our red line down to the black stick at the end, that's our ball to target line. Um, our green line here, this is where our club face is looking. So wherever our club face is looking, that's within reason, like I say, 85% with a relatively centre strike, that's where our ball's gonna start. So that line doesn't lie. Wherever our club face is looking, that's where our ball is going to start and we're going to say this blue line here is the path our club is swinging on and again that could be into out, target line, out to in, across the line. Okay so what we're going to do, let's do a few scenarios so we're going to start off with maybe a common one so our club face is going to be at the point of impact a bit closed to our ball to target line, so pointing somewhat to the left, but we're going to have a swing path which is swinging even further left. So club face pointing just left of our ball to target line, but a club, face, club path which is going further to the left, a fairly big vector, so we're going to see a ball flight that quickly curves off to the right and ends up missing our target considerably to the right. And obviously the bigger this vector gets here, the more spin we're gonna put on the ball. So if this swing path was even further across, club face pointing here, but club swinging even further across, then we're gonna see a ball that quick starts at the same point, but quickly spins and ends up further right of our target. Okay, so let's have another look at another one here. So let's go for, we'll go for the lovely little draw. So to get that lovely little draw, draw curves from right to left. So we need the ball to start to the right of our target. So we need the club face to be somewhat open to our ball to target line. So pointing out to the right but obviously we need a swing path to create the curve and the, the counterclockwise spin. We need a, a path that's swinging somewhat to the right of our club face here. And that's going to give us enough spin just to maybe get a nice little curving draw that brings us back to our target here. Um, which is nice, we'd, we all, we'd all like that one. We don't like anyone that finishes on our target. In some ways, it doesn't matter 
how much curb we get as long as we're in control of it. And that's the big thing. There's no right or wrong here. But obviously the idea, you know, there's plenty of people which have, say, quite a big fade, but they manage it, so they play really good golf. An interesting one I find sometimes when I talk to people would be this one where a club face is slightly closed to our ball to target line, so pointing slightly left, but a swing path which is more to the right. So again, it's going to impart counterclockwise spin, club face, so ball starting just left to target line, and the, and the ball flight we're going to see with that one is one that obviously now, because of the swing path to the right of the club face, is going to curve and miss our target somewhat to the left. And the interesting thing with this one is, is quite often when I'm out on the practice tee, um, when people see something starting left and curving even further left, the first thing I hear is, oh, I've come over the top of that, um, you know, I've, and it's just pulled it off to the left. I mean, the reality is, obviously, yes, the club face was slightly closed, so you can call that a slight pull, but to create the curve that went even further left, our swing path might have even been positive out slightly to the right of our ball to target line. So although people feel oh, I've pulled it, I've come over the top, in reality that ball flight there is quite a nice in to out swing path, but a club face isn't in the position to mean that our ball starts in a place to allow for that curve. Again, we need both vectors all shifted a little bit further to our right. Okay? So again, you know, from an exact uh, club face position, exactly the same as this one, if the person can just manage and has the feel to then just get a swing path that's slightly left of this green, in fact, the club face, the green line, then again, that's gonna produce the sweetest little fade which lands on our target. I won't go any further than that. I hope that's given you an idea. At the end of the day, the old saying is the club face sends it. So the club face is going to send it in a direction wherever this is pointing. And depending on where the swing path is, that's going to bend it. And at the end of the day, if the, if the swing path is going left of where the club face is looking, it's going to curve it to the right. If the swing path is going to the right of where the club face is looking, it's going to bend to the left. The bigger the vector, the bigger the curve, and obviously we just need to manage those two, like in this faded scenario, that means that our ball is always trying to curve back to our target and not further away from our target. I hope this helps. Like and subscribe below. Obviously any questions on this, I hope this has got some sort of message across, but hopefully knowledge about what the ball's doing when it takes off means that you've got a better chance of getting your attention to a piece of your swing or whatever that could make a difference for you in controlling club face and swing path. Enjoy you guys, keep swinging.